Welcome back to my channel. This is Nikita aka Miss Beauty23. And if you're new here, hi, aloha, welcome. Now, guys, the usual what we talk about here is skincare. This is indeed our base platform. But if it's not skincare, then it's beauty, raw, authentic beauty, dissecting beauty from the inside out, personal care, hair care, nail care, all of that stuff from the internal meeting the external. So if you're into all of that, if this is your neck of the woods, and I suggest that you subscribe right now without hesitation. Subscribe and of course, like this video because it's good for the YouTube algorithm and share because sharing is caring, guys. So without further ado, without wasting any more time, let's get into today's video. So guys, what I'm going to be talking about today is 10 of the most asked skincare questions and state whether they're true or false. So pay attention, because we just might have a few questions here that you're grappling with. So if you want to get clarity to these questions, stay tuned and watch this entire video. Now, let's get into it. Question number one. Is masking necessary? Otherwise, is it necessary to use your facial mask? Hmm. Yes, it is. It might not be a bare minimal like cleansing and moisturizing an SPF, but it plays a vital role. We recommend that you mask at least twice per week because some of these masks tend to have the clay consistency. Apart from the whole hydrating mask and the collagen mask, most persons tend to use those clay masks that has that, that, that drying property in it, right? And because it has that clay consistency, it can over dry the skin. So you don't want to be using this too often because now this will trigger off your trans epidermal water loss condition into your skin, causing your skin to become surface dry. But it does play a vital role, you know what I mean, in terms of drying up those acne or if it's a collagen mask, infusing hydration into the skin, you know, boosting up the collagen. So it plays a vital role and it is necessary, even if it's not a bare minimal or a bare essential, it does play a vital role. So yes, to answer your question, at least twice per week. Question number two, should I even address this? Is sunscreen optional? That's a must. Just like the hair that you breathe or the water that you drink, it's essential. Listen, even if you are not too exposed to the sun, say you're not out and about walking up and down 24 seven in the sun. Say you're driving, the, 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 the UV ray lights has the ability to penetrate through your windscreen and you can still be affected by it. So wear your SPF once you're stepping out of the house, put your SPF on your sun protection factor it's basically like a gate that closing and locking all of those skincare treatments that you applied onto the skin and it helps to protect the skin from aging and burning question number three is it necessary to wash off my oil cleanser yes you don't want to leave the oil cleanser on your face even though these oil cleansers help to melt the makeup break away the, the thick spf and decongest the pores push up those sebaceous plugs all that stuff it does all of that but it was not created to stay on the skin remember that this is a oil-based product right and if you're gonna have this on the skin and it, it basically did the job which to melt away the makeup and all that stuff if you don't wash it off where is all that residue and bacteria are going to go it's going to sit on the surface of the skin and cause fresh breakout guys come on man question number four do i need to moisturize given, given that i have oily skin yes you need to moisturize you need to hydrate the skin remember this guys once the skin is fully hydrated it's able to communicate with itself much better so with that being said you drink your water for the, the internal aspect of it and you use your hydrators on the external aspect once you hydrate your organs those water molecular cells will now be deposited onto the skin and once the skin is fully hydrated it's able to function as stated before so even though you're drinking your water that won't be enough you have to meet this water halfway where you use your hydrators to build up your moisture barriers to strengthen your acid mantle so your skin is able to heal itself holistically because say you don't use moisturizers or hydrators your skin will eventually become really dry and once the skin is dry oily or not oily it is going to freak out and it's going to be secreting more oil to the surface for the water loss so you want to hydrate the skin just to stabilize it question number five is purging the same as breaking out no it's not 
purging is when you do get breakout in areas in which you normally get your breakout in right and this is triggered off this is triggered by you using certain products with certain active ingredients like for example bpo can cause purging retina can can cause temporary purging as well and this is something something that can range between a month to three months you know because these are microcomodones that are being pushed up to the surface of the skin that is purging purging appears in areas in which you normally get breakout no when you have a regular breakout it tends to come in a scattered random area on the face and this is sometimes triggered off by allergic reaction to using certain products or applying you know certain items on the skin whether it be a chain or earring or fragrance can cause that or if your skin is just dirty and it's not being cleaned properly then you can get random breakout which is acne so they are not the same guys question number six does alcohol affect the skin this one is self-explanatory well I believe it is no alcohol is labeled as diuretic what does this mean it dehydrates the skin and the body and it also increases your flow of urine this is why when you're drinking a lot you tend to feel the need to pee a lot so it is not good for your skin guys it dehydrates your skin and your body and I'm going to be dropping a video on how it affects the body negatively a more in-depth video but this video let's, let's just focus on the skin aspect of it moving on to the next question I believe I lost count but nonetheless the next question is do our pores open and close no they don't there is no physical mechanism that proves that our pores technically open and close what really happens is that once heat comes in contact with the skin it softens up those ceramides and those lipids making it very vulnerable and susceptible to that heat at the time making it easier for the bacteria to be removed off the surface of the skin what i can tell you though is that cold water tighten your pores no once once the cold water comes in contact with your pore, it activates that your erector pile muscle, which, which is a muscle that is attached to our hair follicle, and then it tightens the skin. Just like if you're, you should be in the cold and you have those little tiny goosebumps on the skin or your hair on the skin stands up, that's your erector pile muscle being active. How does smoking affect the skin? Does it have a, a negative effect on the skin? Yes, it does. Let's talk about cigarettes. Cigarettes contain carbon monoxide. No, with carbon monoxide, this displaces oxygen into the skin. And it also limits the blood flow and oxygen flow to the face and the body. This is a process which is called vasoconstriction, where this is the narrowing of your blood vessels. So it's limiting the flow of blood throughout the body. So just think about it. And it also contains nicotine, which also limits the flow of blood into the body. This is why some persons, especially somebody that has a light skin tone, tend to have that flushed, pale look if they smoke a lot because it's, it's, it's interfering with the flow of oxygen and blood into the body. So yes, it can affect your skin negatively. Next question, can AHAs and vitamin C be mixed? AHAs, otherwise known as alpha hydroxy acid. We're talking about like glycolic acid and lactic acid. These are peels, right? No, can these be mixed? No, these two in particular cannot be mixed that? because if, if these two products are applied onto the skin, once the skin's pH is low, it can cause severe irritation onto the skin. We're talking about inflammation, itching, burning, stinging, all that stuff. So you don't want to be mixing these two active together because they will become even more active if the skin's pH is low. As you guys know, our skin's pH is known as um, potential hydrogen, right? And this is pretty much the balance of, of hormone into our skin. No, our skin's pH should be between four and a half to, to seven. So if it's below four and a half, it's, it's considered low. And if your skin's pH is low at the time while you use these two active ingredients, you can cause massive eruption onto the skin. So do not mix these two active ingredients. Last question. Can makeup wipes be substituted for cleansing wipes? In other words, do makeup wipes work the same as cleansing wipes? Can I just use my makeup remover wipes and call it a day and tell myself that my face is clean? No, no, no. The makeup wipes were initially created to remove the makeup not to cleanse the skin i'm not even a fan of them because some of these makeup wipes are made from materials that are not eco-friendly they, they they cause you know global issues into our environment so i'm not i'm not a fan of it and apart from that it can damage the skin as well you know when you're dragging these wipes all over the face it causes inflammation onto the skin it causes irritation and all that stuff. it causes your skin to become sensitized i'm not in for it get yourself a good old oil cleanser to melt away your makeup and your traditional foaming cleanser and to answer the question they're not 
the same one was initially created to remove the makeup not to remove the junk and the dirt that is going to be left after you remove the makeup so they're not the same you use your makeup remover if you wish because i'm not telling you not to use it it's not the best option but if you want you can use it but after which you get your cleanser to properly cleanse your skin and to decongest those pores guys so i hope you guys found value in this short quick and spicy video i hope you guys learned something because these are some of the questions i get when i'm consulting with my clients so i felt the need to really address this publicly should in case you guys are grappling with any of these questions guys so don't forget to follow me on my socials at i am underscore at nikita wilson my instagram my business page at skin obsession by underscore by nikita and of course my tiktok at i am underscore nikita where i post one minute snippet of a lot of skincare tips and tricks all right guys so until next time same time, same place. Bye, my beauty bugs.